In this video, we'll take a look at the differences between the HTML dialog element and the new popover API. I'll also walk you through an example of both a dialog and popover in action. Hey guys, and welcome to Zool Coding. To demonstrate dialogues and popovers, I created a simple shopping page, which will include a size guide dialog and popover tooltip that we'll explore later on. All the HTML, CSS, and few lines of JavaScript are available from the link in the description down below. But let's first understand the differences between dialogues and popovers. The dialog element allows us to create modal or non-modal dialog boxes, such as confirmation messages. The browser support for this is pretty good, and it's available in all modern browsers. To open the dialog, we can call show modal on the dialog element. And as you can see, I'm unable to interact with anything else on the page while it's open. But if the dialog was open using the show function, I can still interact with the rest of the page. Dialogues can also be closed without JavaScript. And all we need is a button inside a form with a method set to dialog like this. What's good about these dialog elements instead of creating your own is that they're really easy to set up and they're accessible with the focus being moved to the dialog when it's opened. Let's look at a popover now, which is a more recent addition to the HTML spec with some teething issues. So you might want to check the browser support in more detail and decide if you want to use it just yet. A popover is essentially designed to create temporary floating elements like tooltips, menus, and other overlays. We don't need any JavaScript to open and close popovers. We can simply use the popover attribute on the element itself and give it an ID. We can then use this ID in a popover target attribute on a button so that when we click the button, the popover will show. And unlike dialogues, we can click anywhere on the page to close the popover. We can also close the popover with a button by setting popover target action to hide like so. So to summarize, we mainly use dialogues for things we want the user to interact with and manually close. And we use popovers for less important contextual information like tooltips. Let's go back to our shopping page and see how we can implement a dialog element. When the user clicks on size guide, we're going to display a dialog showing the size guide. Because the size guide is going to take up quite a bit of space, I've opted to use a dialog queue instead of a popover to provide a more focused user experience for this information. Looking at the HTML, I've added in a dialog element here with a form that has its method set to dialog, along with a button that will close the dialog. Down here, I've added in a script with two constants, one for the size guide button link and the other for the dialog. We'll just need to add in a click event handler, which will call show modal on the dialog when triggered. And when I click on size guide, the dialog appears as a modal, meaning that I can't interact with the rest of the page and I can close it using the button. We can add a backdrop to a dialog to focus the user's attention on the dialog's contents. In the CSS, we can use the backdrop pseudo selector and add in the styles with a semi-transparent background color. And now when I open the dialog, the backdrop appears, making it look much better. If you want to let the user click on the backdrop to close the dialog, we can do this by adding in another click event handler on the dialog element. And if the event target is the dialog itself, not any children elements like the form inside, then we can close the dialog with the close function. Let's try it out. Now that works, we can go one step further and add in an animation when the dialog opens. I've added in some keyframes here. The scale in one will zoom the dialog box in slightly whilst fading in, and the simple fade in keyframe will be used for the backdrop. We can apply these to the dialog element and backdrop respectively. Let's test it out. And there we are, the animation works as intended. Now that we've looked at the dialog element, let's implement a popover as well. When the user clicks pay in installments, we'll display a tooltip with some more information. Looking at the HTML, I've added in the popover, which is just a div element with a popover attribute set. All we need to do now is add a popover target attribute to the button link, referencing the ID of the popover above. In the styles above, I've set the position of the popover to absolute and set the margin so it displays on the right hand side of the screen for now. We'll look at anchoring it to the button link in just a moment. So now if I click on pane installments, the popover appears as intended, and I can click anywhere on the page to hide it. Let's see how we can use another button to hide the popover this time. I'll add one in here and set popover target action to hide this time. And as you can see, the close function works as expected without the need for any JavaScript. But if we did want to use JavaScript to manually open and close the popover, we can simply use show popover like this and hide popover to close it again. There's also a toggle popover function as well. Let's see if we can position this popover better now, as it looks a bit random stuck to the right hand side of the screen. We can make use of anchor in CSS to position the popover about a specific element. Bear in mind that this feature is quite new and not fully supported in some browsers yet. 
It essentially works by assigning an anchor name to the element we want to position a popover about, that's our button link. And then for the popover itself, we set position anchor to the name of the anchor above, and then set the top of the popover to the bottom of the button link in this case, and the left of the popover to the left of the button link. This essentially positions the popover directly underneath the button link. Let's set it out. And as you can see, the popover appears in a much better place now. We added some animations to our dialogue, so let's do the same for this popover. And this time, we'll take it one step further by adding exiting animations. This means the popover will animate when it opens, and also when it closes. I've added in some styles for when the popover is open. Here we're using the popover open pseudo class to target the popover when it's visible. We set its final state to be fully opaque and at its intended Y position. The starting style rule, which is a recent addition to the CSS spec, defines the initial state, where the popover starts 20 pixels lower and completely transparent. Because the popover's display property is set to none when it closes, we not only need to apply transitions to the transform and opacity, but also to the display property, each lasting 0.5 seconds here. The transition behavior allow discrete property is very important, as it allows the transition to work smoothly with the display property, which normally doesn't animate. And lastly, when the pop-up disappears, we're going to drop it downwards by 50 pixels and set the opacity to zero again. Let's see how that looks. So as I open the popover, it flows upwards, and as I click off it, it flows downwards. And that covers everything you need to know to get started with popovers and dialogues. Be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. If you're looking for some example apps, I've created a suite of desktop and Android apps that are all open source. And I've also made this language and insight Buzz 11 that's 100% free. Check them both out in the description down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to keep updated with the latest from Azul Coding. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.